As we expand, the universe expands. Acquire further knowledge and understanding about reality and our place within it once again. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to episode 103 of Paradigm Shift Radio. This episode was part two of our previous Share What You Know show, as we invite members of the community to interact and participate in the practice of sharing knowledge and being heard by a global audience. At the top of the show, we were joined again by Jessica Starshine, who got things rolling by sharing some of her observations and awareness about how manifestation works within this shared dream reality, and how we can use it to help make this world a more love-filled place. Numerous other friends joined us including Ryan and our dedicated shifter friend Alon of the Love Trip team, who shared his knowledge gained through the experience of their ongoing choice to be shifters in the midst of chaos, to share free hugs with strangers and to be a valuable beacon of light, something we encourage everyone listening to summon the courage to do too. Is the love joined us after that as he channeled in some wisdom and James informed us about the emergence of quantum scientific studies that are helping map out consciousness, known as the orchestrated objective reduction. To end off the show, Talisa chimed in, followed by Cisco, who guided us through a meditative period of reflection. Paradigm Shift Radio is an interactive show for us as consciousness to be able to learn and evolve together. So be sure to share this episode and further conscious media available at ParadigmShiftCentral.com with your friends, and be involved with this community on multiple levels. Help build the tribe where you are, keep asking questions, keep putting forth a best effort, and join us as a collective as we are helping change the world. Have fun, enjoy the flow, and one love. Take flight once again with Paradigm Shift Radio. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in live once again. This is your good buddy, Brendan, a.k.a. Skull Babylon. You're joining us for another exciting, educational, and inspirational, consciousness-expanding episode of Paradigm Shift Radio tonight. And tonight's episode is another Share What You Know show. So we're going to be getting into this right off the bat. we got about 90 minutes on the clock, and we're really going to see what we can co-create with it together. And of course, those of you who may be new to Paradigm Shift Radio, welcome, welcome. Those of you who are in the live chat, please feel free to post your location if you guys are just curious as to where these other shifters are are, are logging in from, are connecting into this uh, beautiful thing that we have today called the Internet, which I think Terrence McKenna would actually be quite proud of what we are doing with Paradigm Shift Radio. He was a wonderful philosopher, and he said that, you know, like the, the Internet is the light at the end of the tunnel it is the hope it is the ability for us to be able to live our lives as individuals while vicariously experiencing everything that all of us as a co-creative collective consciousness are being able to experience collectively together and and we can learn from what we're doing and we can also share our media and share our voices and connect with one another and really, really accelerate things. So I can say for certain that within the last five, six years that this Paradigm Shift Radio, the Paradigm Shift Project has been going on, that things have definitely, definitely been continuing to accelerate much in the fashion of the Fibonacci sequence, in the fashion of the the, the ballooning, the ever-expanding breath of the universe that we are through our actions and through the knowledge that we obtain and through the knowledge that we share. So thank you so much, everybody, for being a part of this co-creative reality. And uh, yeah, with that said, if anybody wants to call into Paradigm Shift Radio tonight, that is what this show is about. It, is a, it was a show for you to be able to be heard, to be heard, to practice sharing your knowledge with a global audience. So if you've ever read anything in a book, if you've been passed on knowledge from an elder, something that you were just like, whoa, like, you know, like this is this is not only worth knowing, but it's worth sharing. Then we invite you to practice sharing that knowledge. And of course, we've talked about plenty of things here on Paradigm Shift Radio. Maybe we'll talk about lucid dreaming tonight. We'll definitely be talking about manifesting reality. We're going to be having our good friend Jessica Starshine back on at the top of the show. She was joining us in the last couple episodes as well, and she's going to be with us here again. And I'm really excited. I know she's actually prepared some notes. So if anybody else is planning on calling in, do everyone a favor. And if you're comfortable, you know, if, if you don't mind, just jot down a couple notes and have an idea of what it is that you want to bring onto the air before you're actually onto the air. But of course, inviting people to be able to get involved with this conversation. And of course, ParadigmShiftCentral.com is the main website you want to check out if you haven't yet. Tons of conscious media on there. And of course, through there, you can also order some of the shift buttons and also order some of the Paradigm Shift t-shirts. ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash shirts or, open your, or Teespring.com slash open your heart only five days and counting left on the sacred white open your heart flower of life shirts that we got going on right there 
sorry about that, hit the mic, and I'll post a link for that in the live chat as it is, and of course, inviting people to be able to order theirs, and uh, those are excellent and awesome tools to be able to help spark inspiration and to be able to evoke synchronicity where you are to be able to build the community. Same with the shift buttons, all that good deal. We'll talk a little bit more about that later through the uh, through the second half of the show, but of course, let's get things rolling as it were, and uh, yeah, looks like we got lots of awesome people in the live chat. Thank you so much to everybody for being a part of this. Please continue Please continue to invite your friends onto the show as Paradigm Shift Radio really gets going here. Like I said, this is this is an excellent this is an excellent tool for us to be able to use as consciousness, to be able to share with our friends, to be able to say, you know, there are some very beautiful and weird people out there and, and I'm happy to be one of them in the sense that weird is beautiful and, and the language is just semantics and what we're doing here, we are shifting the paradigm of everything, of everything, of the way we see the world, with the way we see ourselves in the world and the way we understand our potential within it. So definitely get ready to get to, to, to be inspired, to get ready to acquire some more knowledge and then more importantly to be able to take this knowledge out into the world around us to be able to change the world to choose to be the change that we wish to see so really excited and really looking forward to get this show going and of course inviting you to be a part of it so thank you so much everyone let's really get moving forward with things here let's continue to branch things forward of course there's a lot of things that i feel i could bring you guys up to speed on there's some uh there's definitely some things that have been going through my mind in the last little bit that i would love to be able to share even just things of practically being able to brush over concepts like sacred geometry or just even anything and just the malleability of reality but we're we're, getting, we're going to get into that i i know that if it's in my mind it's in other people's minds too so i'm excited to see what the hive mind is bringing to the surface through this episode of paradigm shift radio so again thank you so much everybody my name is brendan you can find me at facebook.com slash skull babylon sub to my youtube channel at youtube.com slash skull babylon i look forward to connecting with many more weird and beautiful people all across the world so that's it we're going to bring on a friend jessica jessica if you're ready we're going to bring you on to paradigm shift radio this is jessica from toronto from paradigm shift toronto community there are paradigm shift communities all across the globe that's the other whole part of this project if you're new to it check out the main website that will bring you up to speed and be inspired build the tribe where you are one day at a time so jessica from toronto if you're ready we're going to bring you on to paradigm shift radio here we go hello Hello. jessica Hey, Hi. good to, good to hear your voice. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Great to be well, here. Yeah. yeah, Jessica, you you really I think you really hit a home run on, on the last show. You you were going over six practical tips to raise your vibration, and uh, I think that even that phrase in itself, um, you know, I, I think when people hear that, they sort of associate it with like woo woo new agey type stuff. But I think what you did, you actually sort of broke it down to realistic, practical visions of how to sort of pursue one's life with more healthy uh, observations, healthy choices, healthy lifestyles, and just being more connected and conscious and being more aware of our uh, our place within this reality. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see what you're bringing to, to the show this time. And uh, with that, that said, I shall pass the stick off to you. And of course, if you if you have any questions you want to bounce off me, feel free. But at this point, this show is your show as much as it is our show. So please share the knowledge you would like to share on the show with the global audience once again. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, again, it is a pleasure to be here. Um, to all the listeners out there, it's a, a joy to be sharing this moment with you, um, expanding our consciousness together. Um, yeah, it's interesting point that you brought up about the, the simple steps that I provided last show. I, I, I think it's like, it's a theme and it's, it's a thing that, you know, spirituality and the new age community comes across as being something that's really broad and something that's really out there and something that's really like scary. And I, I think a lot of people are afraid of it because of their misconceptions about it, but really it's quite simple. We're, we're all spiritual beings and, um, it's a lot more accessible than we think. Um, so, on that note, uh, I'm going to discuss manifestation power this evening. And, again, I've, I've written some notes. I'm just going to read it off the page and kind of wing it a little bit here and there. But, um, yeah, manifestation is something that uh, has become a little bit more um, it's it's coming up from coming up out of the depths of 
the water and it is coming up into our consciousness and our awareness in our society. Some aspects of this that we've seen are movies like The Matrix. Um, I think Alice in Wonderland also kind of delves into that realm a little bit, although it's a little bit more psychedelic. And uh, certain books like The Secret, which uh, you know a lot of people know about The Secret. I don't know if a lot of people have read it or watched the movie. Um, I My personal experience with it is that I started to use The Secret without even knowing what the secret was. And then once I started to read the secret, I started to realize that it's not really that much of a secret at all. Um, it's something that, like you mentioned before at the beginning of the show, um, we're all creating our reality around us with every single thought, with every single word that we utter, every action that we take creates ripples in the time-space continuum. And there's a, a famous scientist or man by the name of Einstein, inventor, and he said that in order for us to create our desired reality, all that we have to do is match its frequency. So my personal story with manifestation is, um, I, I mentioned in the last show, I became, I had a spiritual awakening about three years ago, and um, it was even farther back than that. It was like maybe six years ago that I, I learned about the secret and I started to actively play around with manifestation. So manifestation is an interesting tool because it's something that is very powerful. If you're conscious of it and even if you're unconscious of it, it has the power to yield positive or negative results in your life. And it's a powerful tool when you become conscious and aware of it because you can learn to manipulate um, your environment around you. Now, again, there are two sides to it because we live in a dualistic world. There's the positive and the negative, but I am only talking about positives because I work with the light. So I'm not going to highlight for people how they can use this to their, you know, to disadvantage other people because I don't truly believe that that is utilizing this tool in its best way. Um, really, what manifestation boils down to is quite simple. There's two factors. One is awareness or sensitivity, and the second one is intention. So literally, like I mentioned, every single thought that we think, every single action that we take. For example, I have a glass on the table right now. If I go to reach that glass, there's an intention, whether I'm aware of it or not, in me picking that glass up. That intention is creating ripples and waves in my reality, and it's creating a chain reaction. It's drawing in certain experiences to me, and it is repelling other circumstances away from me. If I start to become aware of my intention in every single action, and you know, some of you may be thinking, that's crazy, how can you possibly do that? Well, you can. And as I mentioned in the last show, uh, meditation is one of those ways to do it. You silence your mind. You become still with the breath. And when you still your mind and you still, you still the mind with the breath by becoming one with the breath, you realize that each breath is a thing. Each step is a thing. Each action is a thing. Um, and all of these things add up to something greater. So all of these things add up to our external world. The world is a giant illusion. For example, let's say you meet somebody on the street. So this is to, to highlight how this chain reaction happens. You meet somebody on the street who appears to be outside of you. The illusion of this world is that everything is outside of us. But if you go back to um, the idea of the Big Bang, uh, for example, the universe is said to have been created uh, source created itself by creating what it wasn't in order to view itself. Um, so I mean, we could we could observe that everything that outside that is outside of us is malleable. It is it is a part of us at some level. Um, so we see this person walking down the street, and we have a thought about them. Maybe I'm thinking, oh, you know what? I really like that person's shirt, but I'm only thinking it. I don't tell it to them. But I do something. I look into their eyes. And when I lock eyes with that person, and that person locks eyes with me, 
something miraculous happens. There's a synapse in my brain. A synapse is a movement of electricity in the brain from that thought into creation. And that person that I'm looking at, that I'm perceiving as outside of me, becomes aware of this. And then there's a synapse in that person's brain. And the electricity of this thought into action, into connection, is creating an expression of creative energy. I'm literally creating myself in that person. I can choose to see the areas and ways in which that person is similar to me or dissimilar to me. And to go back to my original point of the creation of the universe or source creating what it is and what it isn't, wouldn't that make so much sense? I'm, I'm creating what I am or I'm creating what I'm not. So, flipping the page. So the person that is responding to me, I can choose to see it as an aspect of me or I can choose to see it as not an aspect of me. Both are two versions of reality and both create a different version of reality. And it's a very trippy idea for sure. Um, so let's tie this all together into something we can actually use, right? I mean, we can become aware of every single interaction. That takes time and dedication, and that's something that we must develop. Let's say we want to, I would like to manifest world peace. So I'm going to explain how this manifestation idea works. Do you remember when you were a child? and you used to use your imagine, uh, imagination to create games or ideas or things like that with your friends. These are things that we did as a kid and we didn't really think about it. We just did it and we had fun and we played in our imaginary worlds. I, I was personally a very imaginative child, um, but the people around me started to kind of press against that imagination and they started to kind of like gear me and guide me along certain paths. And over time, the imagination became suppressed. However, it showed up in a different form, which is called daydreaming. I'm pretty sure almost everybody daydreams. Daydreaming is another form of, of dreaming. It's an active form of daydreaming, or sorry, of night dreaming. And when you daydream, you are imagining something that you wish to come into being or you're imagining something that was, either way, you're interacting with something that you wish to create or something that has been created. So manifestation works very similar to this. Basically what you do is quite simple. You imagine the desired result. So I'm going to imagine world peace. This is something I wish to see and I will see um, in my lifetime, I believe. So I'm imagining world peace. What you have to do is you have to imagine world peace. You have to taste world peace. You have to smell world peace. You have to imagine it so fully. You can do this by going into meditation. Meditation is a great way to manifest your desired outcome or result. Uh, daydreaming, is, I kind of view it as like a form of meditation, sort of. So you're imagining your desired result, you're imagining world peace. And the idea is that you don't focus on what you don't want to happen. You don't focus on the negative aspects, you focus on the positive aspects. And the reason is because the more positivity, positive energy you bring into it, the more supportive it is of creating your desired reality. So you literally imagine it so vividly as if it is already in place, as if it is already your reality. This is how vividly you must imagine it. And this may take time. This may not be the first time I think of world peace I arrive at this, this ultimate state of reality. It might take time for me to imagine it in ultimate uh, vividness. When I get to that point, where I can absolutely certainly feel, and you'll start to feel it grow in your field, in your awareness. You'll start to feel this reality, this manifestation coming into your life. And then when you start to feel it completely as if it's already happened, you let it go. You completely release it, 
release every thought about it, every idea about it, and you trust and you have faith that it's already happened. Some, some may think, how can you possibly manifest if you just release it like that? Well, it's kind of like that, but there's a little bit more to it, which is that since you know that it's already happened, right? You feel that it's already happened. You start to see it in your reality. And when you start to see it, for example, if I see two people embracing each other on the street, I see that as world peace, right? Because I've already created it. I know what it looks like. Somebody else might see that as something else, but I choose to see it as world peace. And when I do, when I see that, when I see the manifestation coming into play, it may not be the total vision of world peace that I imagined, but I acknowledge it and I say thank you and I show my gratitude and I hold that frequency of world peace within me and I interact with what I'm seeing in the same way that I held the vision. So I keep that frequency high. If this makes sense, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking too vaguely or abstractly, but I'm trying to make it sound as practical as possible. <laughs> I think I think uh, you're you're doing a good job. I'll, I'll definitely definitely say that because you're right. I mean, this is in in a lot of ways this, this is some stuff that that's the challenge is trying to put the, these these ineffable experiences into words and just being able to like map out the entire relation of the patterns that we've been observing mm-hmm. and experiencing and being able to just figure out like what is happening at a you know sort of because that. You're right. There's sort of like an input-output aspect of reality that is consistent. It, it is something where we can inject code into it knowing that an output will occur. And the input that we put in are the thoughts that we're constantly emitting. You know, we are constantly like these signal towers. We are these radio antennas. And we are both emitting and receiving. But I think, and I'll pass it back to you, and I will say we'll just sort of, um, we'll set this up for the next caller just so we can continue with that. And it, it may be our, our good buddy Alon actually is going to be calling in soon. Um, but one thing I was going to say that I really like what you hit upon is emphasizing the idea of with manifestation, letting go is such an important part because we often see things in our mind and we're like, yeah, I really want it to be like that. But oftentimes the universe will be like, oh, that's a cool idea, but it's going to be like this instead Mm -hmm. and it won't be what you expect. So sometimes it is holding on to a specific, uh, a, a specific idea of how something will show up in your life that is actually like preventing it from showing up in the way that is actually more optimized to your life path at that point. So yes, in the process of saying, uh, manifesting something, putting out that intention, and then letting letting go is the idea of letting go your expectations as to how you will receive it, and then knowing that you will receive it in time when the time is right, and that could be a long time. And it, eventually the idea is, is that everything will come around or until you actually change your intention and say like, you know what, actually I think I changed my mind. I think I might want something different, you know. I think I might want to go in a different direction. And at which point the universe will be like, okay, good. You know, like, well, well we can change that. We can adjust. We can adjust on the fly like that. But manifestation is a really, really interesting thing. And I think for me it's really allowed me to sort of integrate my own relationship with things like synchronicity and realizing that like synchronicity is sort of the middleman in terms of manifestation that will say like you want something you have to go out and get it and the universe will put something out halfway but you still have to sort of like reach your hand out and and hold on to something yeah at the same time yes it works both ways where sometimes the universe will drop something in your lap as well but just being aware of uh of the fact that like yeah like every i i love the idea I'll pass it back to you, that consciousness is like a mirror test. It's being, it's, it's being able to see yourself in your surroundings. Uh, I really like that. So even when it's being able to see your intentions and, and it goes, like you said, it goes both ways. If some people, and this is a big topic, you know, if people are just like, oh, but my life's so negative, does that imply that that negativity is something that they are man that they are bringing in themselves? And if that's the case, then what that demands is them to take responsibility for all of the choices and the actions, or as many as they con- can consciously develop uh, within their life, knowing that like the more conscious that we are of each choice, the more in control, or you know maybe not control is the right word, but the more influential we are of the reality that we are creating. So rather than just being the victim of reality we become more of like that God mind consciousness, co-creator, God spirit in a human form doing awesome stuff and being the artist and the canvas at the same time. Uh, that's just a few thoughts on my own, but yeah, if there's, 
Anything else, Jessica, that maybe you can just set us up and then we'll uh, see if Alon's ready to come on in the next few minutes. Or we'll just bring someone else on, either way. Cool. Thank you for that. That was awesome. And, uh, yeah, you articulated it perfectly. Um, I was going to mention um, uh, the idea of conscious language as well. Because it is a huge, as much as holding the vision and, like you're saying, you know, letting that go and watching it show up in your reality, surprising you, right, and allowing it to surprise you. Um, there's two other little things. One is accepting, not only, not just accepting what comes to you if it's not perfect for you, because that is part of what creates our reality as well. So let's say I, I'm looking for... Um, Okay, something I'm actually manifesting to create, uh, you know, a conscious community with people. But, and there's an opportunity that comes to me. Let's say it comes to me, but it's in the city. But I would rather live in the country. I have a choice. I can choose that because that is a gift from spirit. Or I can wait. And I can see and trust that it will come to me. That it will come to me in divine timing. So, yes, I'm so glad you touched on that point. Divine timing is so key. Because even though we ask for things, it's not always in our best interest what we're asking for, right? So then this, this awareness, um, how we ask for things, bringing awareness back to the language. So if I say, for example, I want or I need, I like to harp on this point with myself and you know with my friends and things, and it drives some people crazy. But there was a time on this earth when language was something that was very revealing. Uh, revered, and it was um, considered to be mm, as maybe as important as water, if I could even dare to say that. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but in this day and age, a lot of the language that we use has been, it's just thrown around as a form of entertainment almost, and it, the conscious connection to what we're saying, what we're emitting, is not always present in conversation. So, yeah, when you're mentioning, you know, somebody saying, oh, my life is blah, 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 you're literally saying, my life is, and then you're declaring what your life is. That is creative power right there. So if you're saying that you're seeing your life a certain way, there's nothing wrong with that. That's your choice. But it is important for us to understand that we can shift our perspective and we can choose to see things differently. And as soon as we do that, that's when our whole world changes. For sure. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Like even when you're just sort of looking at this from the from the science side of things, you think about the idea of sending signals from the brain that affect the body, and uh, it, and, it, and obviously it sort of like goes both ways, you know. But a simple example would be, you know, our stomach will tell us that we're hungry, but sometimes it will almost be like a split second before and be like, hmm, I'm hungry, or, or you know, maybe do I need food? And then the stomach will like tell you it'll be like it'll be like, oh, thanks for asking. Actually, yeah, I am kind of hungry, and then you get that sensation. But then at the same time, you can almost shut that off with another command to be like actually you know what no I, I don't need food right now and then the stomach will be like oh okay and then it will stop feeling that way and uh, people can play around with these ideas where they're actually just more in control of their body and, and this can even be related to yeah like getting further into meditation and really connecting with the breath for me as an athlete, for me as a, as a soccer player this season, I was actually playing around with that, idea, with that idea where sometimes I would go entire games where we wouldn't have extra players on our bench, so I would be on for a 90-minute period running like up on forward. And uh, one of the things I was playing around with was the idea of like needing water in my, in my thirst, in my drink, like in my, in my mouth, just being thirsty, but then being like, all right, you know, like, all right, body, consciously, like, on a subatomic level, pull water out of other parts of my body to make myself like hydrated. Like there's probably some like water in like that's just floating around everywhere that my body's not consciously like using. And it's just used to being fed through like the mouth and everything. So I'm just like, there's got to be reserves that I still haven't like tapped into. And then I like put forth that intention. I send that signal and I 
feel in myself that I can keep going. So it's like, is something actually happening there, or is, or you know, am I just like, just like you know, swinging it at the wind or whatever like that? But I mean, mm-hmm. like I, I would assume to think that yes, in the same way I can, the brain can control all sorts of other things. That that in itself would be one thing. So I mean, I didn't read that in a book. It just made sense to me. It sounds like something that would be like you know, a martial arts type higher consciousness thing that may or may not show up in an anime or something like that. So it made sense to me, and I and I try it. So I encourage other people to try that or just like other things. Uh, I mean, that in itself brings into the whole like mind over matter and being able to like break bricks and being able to like step on hot coal and things like that so it, there's definitely the incredible interrelatability um with the whole manifestation topic uh and one thing i'll just hit upon it just because i think it's again important to remind people of is that this whole idea of being able to create our reality stems from what i consider to be the origins of reality which is the dream space so understanding that we're creating here is parallel to understanding how we create in our dreams and we know through experience that we can actively instantaneously create in our dreams something that I remind people of all the time you know you say you want to teleport you can teleport you want an apple in your hand you get an apple in your hand so in the same way that we're doing that in our dreams we're doing that in this version this vibration of reality that has like this different aspect of version of time and it, and it appears physical in this illusion um, but yeah it's just I think it's super key to understand that like when people are just like well why does it work that way why does it, why does manifestation work that way my best answer is because that's how it works in its dream in the dream space mm-hmm. and the dream space is actually like the more sacred version of reality in the sense that I think it's closer to the original source in the idea that this, this is just a theory and I'll just put this up to the side and you know like Alan Watts would say just as something to think about you know you don't have to believe anything I say but the idea that like the the physical reality that we're in actually like came later it's almost like a later version of the matrix whereas the dream space is the original one and then we created realities within realities which, and this is a kicker to sort of like drive it home for some people, is actually what we're doing again right now through mm-hmm. things like virtual reality and video games. When you think about it, it'd be like, oh, crazy, we're creating realities within realities. So, I mean, even the idea of creating a story or writing a book, you know, people are like, I have a vision for a world. Now we have the technology to actually like map this out and build it on a physical space. So it's just reinforcing the idea of how much we're consciously creating this reality. The whole, you know, sort of gods with amnesia thing, not to blow it out of proportion, but it just means that in the same way, uh, like the sacred geometry that is everywhere is in everything. It's also the idea that like a single, a single thought can ripple out into the holographic fractal that is the everything. So that is why. That is why one person can change the world. One person can help change the world. And, I mean, to just sort of, like, reflect this back, like, some would say that I'm a prime example of that potential. Like, yes, this began as something that I had a vision of. And how did it come into being? Well, obviously through some sort of action and that action was a process of manifestation so this is my shared dream that i've helped bring into this dream my shared idea and my shared creation and the whole idea is inviting other people to bring in their creations to be an ambassador for these thoughts that are existing within the ether that need our participation as physical beings to manifest into the physical of this reality to be able to share with the other people and to ultimately if this is your goal, to help wake people up, to help them remember. Because, and I've said this before, but the reason why I do all this paradigm shift stuff and the reason why I invite everybody here is A, because I want to, it was a way for me to make new friends. And uh, that was like part of the motivation. I'm just like, I want to make more friends. And then I started the club and then it became the internet show. And now I've like connected with awesome people such as yourself. And it's also the other thing that because people deserve to be happy. And I think through realizing how much control that we have within our reality, it gives us the opportunity to realize how much opportunity we have to change our reality from a state of negativity, low vibration, fear, sort of glumness, fogginess, if you want to call it that, and like being able to see the awesomeness that is like in our present moment that is available, that is like, that is the gift the present moment because not everything walking around and has the experience of being alive like we as humans who do and i was always wondering i'm like i'm like i'm like do the plants envy us maybe they don't maybe the plants are like are like all right like go human go like we're gonna stay here and be plants as best as we can and then we want to be able to like encourage you to be a human the best as you can so Sometimes we just have to look back at the plants and look at the trees and look at the animal friends and just say, like, you know what? You guys are doing awesome. You guys are doing great. 
I'm going to do the best I can to be a human, the best I can. So that's <laughs> what I encourage other people to do is do put forth your best effort. That's the most put forth your honest best best effort, and the universe will be like absolutely just like happy and help you along the way. And that's the interesting thing: the universe is always trying to help us. It's always trying to help us. So yeah, it's really cool stuff. So that's a uh, again that's beautiful. That's just, couple of things I want to share there, so thanks. And um, I'd like to bring on another caller. We're going to bring on a caller. Uh, it doesn't look like our buddy Alon is uh, in the live chat right or in the queue right now, but we'll hear from him later, theoretically. But we got a caller from area code 402, and we're going to bring them on. And then we got a couple other callers, and we'll bring them on shortly after. So we still got an hour in the show. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Jessica, for sharing your what you know, sharing your knowledge. And you're still, are you cool to stick around for a while longer? Yep. Be, yep. Cool. Awesome. So we'll build we'll build this conversation circle going from two points, three points, getting some trifecta, a little uh, tri scalius. That's like the the Celtic <laughs> three, three scot three spiral. Scalius just means spiral. I was learning about that uh, on the cool. weekend. I got all sorts of stories. I feel like I could bring you guys up to speed on. A lot happens. A lot happens in a week. You know. So. Thank you. Well, uh, well, thank you, Jessica. And uh, yeah, we're gonna just bring on this next caller. But uh, let me just pass it back to you just before we do that if there's anything else you just want to emphasize or just any additional things that you want to help remember help people remember um i really i really liked the simple message that you said at the end which was uh what was it something like follow your joy or do what feels right or something like that do do what feels good to you do your best or do put your forth best. your best effort. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, but you know, along the same line, same thread. But I mean, I think that sums up everything I said about manifestation is just, you know, do what feels right, do what feels good, and keep following those good feelings, and your world will continue to amaze you. Mhm. Yeah, but I'll just add on to that because again, the conversation is fractal in both directions. Um, mm-hmm. Be aware between what feels good and what is you giving in to, like, the lust of desire in terms True. of simple yeah. things. Because, I mean, yeah. some people would say, like, well, eating this whole <laughs> box of cookies feels pretty good, so maybe <laughs> I should just stay at home and eat cookies and play video games and not do anything. So just mm-hmm. be aware of that, like, no, we, we encourage you to put forth a best effort and do what feels good. So if you can balance it between the two and be honest and, and, and just be able to contribute to, to your own story and to the collective story, then, then yeah, because there's too many, too many stories right now are, are people sitting at home and being apathetic mm-hmm. and playing video games. So we, we know what yeah. that story is. Let's create new stories. That's, that's what I say. So we're creating a new story right now as we speak. We are writing it and living it as we speak. So cool stuff. Eat, eat some blueberries instead of cookies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Okay, so Jessica, we're going to bring on uh, this next caller, and uh, we'll keep you on the air, so we'll see how things play out from here. So thanks again, Jessica, and post your live chat, post your Facebook into the live chat, and uh, we'll uh, get people connected with you. So good times. All right. So it looks like uh looks like Alon's going to probably be calling in. Uh we he is called in now, but I'm going to stick with uh, my original intention to bring on a uh, caller from Air Code 402. At least at least get him in and maybe we'll get Alon in shortly after. I just know everybody's calling in from a phone trying to save you guys money here. So caller from Air Code 402, we're going to bring you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello. Hello hello caller, can you hear us? And namaste everybody. Right on. Awesome. Caller, welcome welcome to Paradigm Shift Radio. Introduce yourself and what it is that you would like to bring to the show that you would like to share. Hello, my name is Ryan, and I'm from Nebraska in the States here, so I've got tons of stuff, man. Where do you want me to share? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you got do you got any uh, anything in mind off the top of your head, like any notes or yeah, anything? Yeah, I got tons of stuff here. Let me, let me first say... You know, it's good, uh, Jessica. I mean, you guys speak very well, by the way. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Um, but Jessica was speaking of, of meditation, and you of synchronicity, etc. And it's weird because I just recently got into Alan Watts, and he speaks about you know taking a step outside of your mind and being like you said that, that crazy and weird, beautiful person. Um, even if it, you know, because a lot of people see meditation as a, a challenging aspect. You know, they, they don't want to even touch it. 
but you can do it for 10 seconds. You can do like a little chant like, Hale, Hale, Krishna, Krishna. You know, if you're Hindu or you could be Christian, you'd be Hallelujah. And at this point, you do not have any mind chatter. You do not have that stress that raises your cortisol levels, the incessant worrying. Um, and it, I believe 90% of us, like, it's sad, but we just we're trapped in this thought matrix of our own uh, consciousness. Um, so, you know, even the Buddhists, uh, you know, monks, they, they do the Om, you know, and, and I just think tying that in with sacred geometry and the Vesica Pisces, like the the womb of the universe, the first division that was ever created via the pattern of life, which is just. Like I said, there's so much information. I can't, I can't begin to put it in a coherent, coherent paragraph or <laughs> conversation. So, let's. Uh, I don't know, man. What, what do you got? You know, I've been into Bill Hicks a lot. You know, he talks about <laughs> frequencies of fear and love. Um, well, there's so much. You know, I. Yeah, I man. Know. Like, I, oh, I, I hear you, man. Like, I'm, there. see, that's the thing. I'm, I'm really curious at this point because I agree. Like, there's a lot out there. And I think, by the sounds of it, both both yourself and I have sort of been around uh, and, and really, you know, surfed our ways through the internet and through the libraries and acquired lots of knowledge. So uh, let's, Ryan, uh, we're, we're, I think we should bring on our buddy Alon, and then we're going to bounce it back to you. Uh, maybe Alon will have a specific question, but let's just, I, I like that we got you on the line here. So are you cool just sort of hanging out for a minute, and then we'll see, and we'll let you jump in with something? Yeah, you, yeah you're, I'm cool with that. One thing oh, you man. said about the internet, and I want to speak this before I move on to sure. something else. Go for uh, it. It's very important that we really petition and help to protect that son of a gun because, you know, you know they're, they're trying with this actor, the CISPA, the SOPA, the PIPA. You know, it it just shows to prove what happened with SOPA and PIPA that Aaron Schwartz headed up. It, overnight, the, it was overturned because 13 million people called in like, hey, get off my internet, fool. You know, this is the open source right here. So I just wanted to say, if you like this show, help to protect the Internet by stopping and helping to uh, raise awareness of these uh, regulation bills that are coming out. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, yeah. like we, I think right now we are incredibly privileged to have our Internet, like to have the freedom of our Internet the way it is. I mean, so easily it could be like completely modified or, or some, you know, it's it's weird, it's weird. But yeah, like I agree, let's... Uh, it, it, just be aware, def definitely be aware. And if there's petitions for that, then then just you know keep your eyes on them and stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, man, like what that's what I'm saying. Like this show, like what, like we'll, we'll get there when we get there. But it's just like who knows, you know? Like imagine a world where the internet doesn't exist. That's that's a conversation in itself. So that that who knows, man? But we theoretically we have to sort of prepare ourselves for that as like a future reality. I mean, if it's on the table, if it's on, then it can be off. Black is white and white is black. So yeah, binary yeah. code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ryan, well, uh, if there's something else you wanted to say, by all means, and then we'll bring a, a lawn onto the air uh, after that. So. Um, you know, another thing I want to say: if you're drinking tap water, please stop because you're not going to be able to be uh, as conscious as you would be able to potentially be because uh, you know. A lot of the nations are putting fluoride in their water as a way to make profits off of industrial waste. And, you know, when you drink that, it's like, well, what's fluoride? Well, it sends, uh, you know, calcification to your pineal gland, which is an actual organ in your body that you use to be spiritual with. You know, it's called your third eye. Um so, you know, since aluminum is just a bunch of toxins, and I don't want to sound fear mongerish, but, you know, Hitler put this in the water for a reason, is to make the mm -hmm. mass docile so we only have 30-some people on a global freaking Internet show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, and that's just, like I said last time I called in, probably like 40 episodes ago at this point, I don't know. Um it's hard not to be jaded with with our fellow man because, like you said, they just want to stay inside and play video games on Facebook and or you know not try to actually help each other, help your brothers and sisters, and mothers, and brothers. It's, uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, that's that's 
what Jessica speaks of. She only deals in the light, but you have to acknowledge that that dark is doing some stuff out there too. Um, you know, personally, I I come from a, a different background than you know a lot of conscious people. I've had to actually do it the hard way you know, via near death experience. You know, mm-hmm. trapped in a capitalistic mentality, et cetera, et cetera. Boom, you know, gunshot wound, you know, self realization. I've only been at this for about three years, and there's so like a uh, there's a, a you know to to not be wrapped in awe and astonishment about things. That's what really makes me a little bit sad for my species. Like when they're walking around in this uh, degree of social neurosis or you know, nervousness. Uh, and like Marianne Williamson says, you know, let your light shine. Because when you let your light shine, you give other people the unspoken permission to do the same. So shine on, brother. Mm-hmm. Let's see what Alon's yeah, talking man. about. For sure, man. Definitely, definitely shining on. And I think Alon will be a good person to sort of uh, bring into the conversation here. And then from there, we'll bring on a caller from air code 732. So just giving them a heads up. Uh, of course, Alon, this is our good buddy who is originally from Paradigm Shift Israel and uh, currently uh, synced up with Paradigm Shift Toronto and has been traveling across Canada doing his free hugs campaign. You can check that out at facebook.com slash go love trip. And, uh, yeah, he's really been doing some amazing things. Me and him have physically hooked up a little bit a couple times. But uh, spiritually, I think we sort of had this one planned out uh, back in the ether. So it's cool to be actually following through with it. I see Elon as uh, one of my main wingmen. Uh, you know, in a past life, if I was like a pilot in World War One, Elon would be one of my guys up in the sky with, we, with me, without a doubt. Him him and Oz and a V, definitely. So definitely looking forward to bringing Elon onto the air. So Elon... If you're ready, we're going to bring you on to Paradigm Shift Radio, and we're going to talk. We're going to talk about whatever knowledge is you want to share, and plus all sorts of awesome free hug stuff. So we're going to talk about that. So there we go. Alon, yo, what's up, dude? Yo, man. How you doing? Yo, man. Good, man. Is, Good. Is, are, you hearing, are you hearing double, or it's okay? I think it sounds okay. Who do you, okay. you got the guys with you, or is it just you? Yeah, right now, it's Avi uh, here. <laughs> know me, just joined the uh, love trip like two weeks ago also yeah and we're in the love trip palace right now and yeah. sending love to all the paradigm shifters out there and yeah i uh well from wh- where where should i start <laughs> well man uh, that's I what mean, i'm saying <laughs> I, I i can say i can say uh, i can tell you about the free we did yesterday on in toronto yeah, that sounds like yeah, well, good vibe. That's a yeah, cool man. story. Yeah, like Alon, uh, I was just gonna say, let's um, let's sort of like work within the theme of the episode of like the you know share what you know. So like I think what you know is what has happened through your personal experience. So through your personal experience yeah. of doing free hugs, what have you come to know? And I mean, I know like even just a couple of weeks ago, you were right in the middle of like the Israel and Palestine uh, like protest oh, yeah. thing that was going on. So I mean, what? And so what did you know? What do you know through your personal experience with that that you can sort of pass on I, that will uh Yeah, I yeah. Share my and and uh train. The, there's a train coming right now near us, so <laughs> we have to wait for a second. <laughs> Sorry about that guys. Anyway. No, no, it's okay. uh, Go for it. So we did uh two uh I think it was a, a week and a half ago probably. There was uh, a uh, a rally of Palestinians and Israelis concerning the the issues that are going on in Israel and Gaza Strip right now, and there was a a, a guy who found us on the internet that uh, just come up with this idea. I, I like he he told us like you guys seem serious. How about coming to this rally and do free hugs in the middle of of two sides? Because what ha- usually happens in those rallies in, is that the Palestinian side goes that way, and the Israeli side goes that way, and they're shouting, shouting at each other, and and it sometimes gets violent, and, and the police needs to come inside, come in the middle, that is. And we thought that could be like an upgrade to the free hug thing. That could be a cool, a cool challenge, and uh, we were up for it. We made a, a big event on the on Facebook, and a lot of people from around the world saw our intentions. We called it free hug for peace, and. What uh what what happened is that um I hope you can hear me right. Yeah, you're good, man. We can hear you. Okay, okay, because there's a big train coming right near, next to us. Anyway, <laughs> uh, 
We, we came uh, dressed in white uh, to the rally, and what we found out when we got there is tons of people, and that the police actually separated, like, intentionally from beforehand, uh, 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 like, a zone for the Israelis and a zone for, uh, for the Palestinians. And obviously, if they saw, like, you have an uh, Israeli or Palestinian flag, they were telling you, like, you should go to the right side, you should go to the left side, because it's not safe for you. It goes either way. And it was like, um, I felt it was like a game. It was like red versus blue. You know, it was like yeah. being there and seeing like the fences and like, instead of just like cheering for your own team, you're just cursing the other team. And it was, it, it seemed quite ridiculous. That's why, that's why it was, I was um, able and me and my friends and the, and the team to, to do the free act because we thought about it as a game and not as, as a war, you know? And then we're like, Okay, we need to chill this this game. Let's 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 remind people that this is this is more than just shouting at each other and and yeah, this is just a ride as as our friend here told us about Bill Hicks and Bill Hicks always used to say that. Remember, this is just a ride. Don't take it too seriously. And um so anyway, uh we started to do the free hugs and we found a spot literally in the in the middle. There was a big statue in Queen's Park in Toronto. We stood there, we picked up our signs high. We did uh, signs in Hebrew, signs in Arabic, signs in, in English, free hugs, and all these kinds of uh, hearts, and, and like a world with, uh, with hearts filling like the land and, and everything. It was, it was quite the experience. It was very intense. There were a lot of people shouting and at each other and police forces trying to separate all these kinds of people. And, but but you, could, you could see that we stood there in the middle dressed in white, picking up those signs that everyone that was in our zone or, or looked at us, was silent. Like people that were shouting and suddenly found us and the signs hanged up, uh, like up uh, in the air, silence, uh, suddenly like silence and was like, wait, what's going on there? They're not picking any flags up. They're not picking any, any, I don't know, conspiracy uh, theories, um, signs or memes or any, any of that sort, any signs of that sort. And we were just doing the free hugs there. And it was an amazing experience, I can tell you right now. It was like, um, like, like, like the fears inside of me is like dealing with the, lo- like the love and the fears having this conversation. And I was like, I'm choosing love right now. I can handle this. And be able to smile in the midst of chaos. Literally, <laughs> there was chaos over there, like news and cops everywhere and people shouting and flags and cursing each other and what what not but we stood there in the middle and doing the free hugs and a lot of people picked us up like they saw it and they, they understood like what we are doing and it was amazing and there was there, there were no not as many hugs as you would like do in, in a regular free hug session downtown somewhere because it wasn't like it wasn't about the hugs it was it was more about like the the symbol that we we symbolized that the, the like a, a neutral ground like like saying these, there are no sides here. We are just humans. We're all humans. There are no sides. Nobody's winning. Everybody's winning, you know? Like there are no, there's not a game here. This is about everyone reminding people that. And after the rally continued, we just stood somewhere in the middle of the road, like having uh, our, our free hug zone. And a lot of people, also Israelis, also Palestinians, came and hugged us. And we got a lot of attention from the news and stuff like that and reporters and the team itself that hugged that day was made of people from all around the world, literally. Also, uh, a Palestinian girl uh, uh, that found us, she really wanted to join us and made a few, uh, a few uploads of pictures from that day because we, we, we couldn't, like, picture anything because we were yeah. doing so, like, we were in there, and, and it was magical. And I think it was just a symbol of the beginning of something much greater that could happen mm-hmm. And doing it more and more in, 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 I wouldn't say war zones, but like, but you know, war zones as a, as if rallies and stuff like that, being present and show another side of everything that yeah. we're all human and it's okay. Yeah, yeah they're that like, was that. 
like psychological like gymnasiums out there that we're sort of weaving our way within like yeah like i was gonna say like psychological like battleground if that's what you want to think of too because like literally you could think of like the culture that we live in as that which again is just another reason for us to to be able to sharpen our sword to tune our instruments to be able to make us better versions of who we are so that we can again survive like and i not not even just survive but thrive and adapt and co-create and to do our part because i mean Alon, if you didn't show up with free hugs at that rally, who would have? You know, like you you were not just saying it's just you, but like you as in the team. And it was initiated as a result of your actions. And, and again, like going back to what Jessica was talking about earlier with like manifestation, this is a result of a manifestation that you and Avi and Oz set out like, over a year ago like this is something that has been ongoing and even now even just for it to be at that point where you're in between and you were ready you were ready to be in between something as like heated as like in israeli palestine you know protests and and rally like that means that you know like even that is just getting ready you for the next ready for the next one so i mean like i know i know like you are you're going to be free hugging throughout the rest of your life you're going to be like going around the world and like wherever it is that you need to be. So it's exciting stuff, man. Like you guys are, are guardians of the galaxies. Like we are guardians yeah. of the galaxies. Like that's yeah. that's kind of like the theme right now. But yeah, man. So uh, thank you so much, Al- Alon. Uh, I, I know we, we can still bounce some conversation around here further. Uh, just keep yeah. an eye on the time. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, but like, just go ahead. Anything else that you just want to want to add, and we'll bring another caller in uh, soon enough as well, and, and we'll pass yeah, them right yeah. back to you. Um, I just want to say uh, also, if you want to, uh, obviously, I like talking to the everyone now, uh, if you want to expand your horizon about being the change, truly, truly being the change, and ask yourself always, what kind of world do I want to live in? And then do and make that world, create that thing. I, I just like sharing a small story. Like, we are, we are now at a campsite near Toronto, all the team, and... and I just saw some uh, a drunk guy near near the washroom just, like, lying on the ground and i was asking myself like what what kind of a world am i living in that no one treats a man that just lying there on the ground in the middle of the night like that and then i asked myself like wait what what can i do and then i wanted to bring him like um uh something from from the tent to to warm up right. like a blanket from the tent and i was thinking like that that's the small things that that being the change are like asking yourself what what world do i want to live in and then create these small good deeds and eventually you'll you'll grow with your ability to do like when we got the off we we got the like the question like do you want to come to the rally we asked ourselves are we ready enough do we have enough self-love in order to show others that love and Mm -hmm. we just said yes for it and i encourage everybody to do so and i know a lot of people in the community of paradigm shift community and in the radio talk about this stuff and yeah be the change guys be the change for sure, man. And thank and, you very and, much for being us on the sh- letting us on the show. Always welcome, man. Always welcome. Always good, good to hear back from you. And uh, yeah, like really, just encouraging people. Like that, the part of the reason why why I wanted to be able to create the show, why I wanted to be able to manifest the show, was because exactly. I wanted all of us to be able to like have the potential to be that person doing free hugs because I mean, free hugs is just one example of like, again, choosing to be the change that you wish to see, just being more active, more engaged with that choice making process of realizing that this reality is far more malleable than what we are commonly taught and commonly told through like mainstream culture. So, I mean, there's lots of, lots of other stuff I want to be able to just remind and share you guys, but yeah, just any, everybody here, I encourage you to just look within yourself and say like am i a guardian of the galaxy am i a person who will stand up for love am i a person who will make the small changes who will do the small things that will make the big differences and even if that's just sharing your art even if that's being a friend for a person who needs a friend even if that's like calling and talking to your mom whatever it is that you need to do just being conscious of that and again realizing that you are the universe experiencing itself like as human so that you can go through this experience. And again, as we expand, the universe expands. So that's it's definitely just being able to tap into the whole unity thing. It's empowerment because it's the whole fractal thing. And we realize that 
by changing ourselves, we do change the bigger picture. And uh, again, just working towards like the future generations to come. I'm sure they would appreciate it if uh, we were able to look back and say like, yes, we, we did what we could. We put forth an honest effort. So thank you so much, everybody, for, for being a part of this project once again. And I'll, I'll just say this now because we only got 35 minutes in the show and I kick myself if I didn't get around to saying it, but just inviting everybody to be able to sign up for Paradigm Shift Radio as a contributor to be able to help support this show by simply donating a couple dollars a month and also to be able to help support the free conscious and shifting buttons that we give away with each episode. And if I can get some names sent to, sorry, if, if people want to be able to win the free buttons for the Paradigm Shift Radio episode that you're listening to right now, then quickly send a message to facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio and let us know that you want to be in the button draw for this one and also just being able to set this up as last week if we can get a person to donate we can get a person to donate for for this episode then that will be able to ensure that we'll get the buttons out there so if you're listening to this through blog talk scroll down and see the paradigm shift community tip jar go there sign up as a donation if you enjoy the show if you enjoy the future want to support the future of conscious media and all the past episodes lots of stuff and I'll just say this, just so you guys get the full picture. So by people signing up as a contributor for this project, for like the Paradigm Shift community, it does help support me being able to help continue to do what I love as a living. So for what you get is a promise from me that I'm going to keep doing what I can through the Paradigm Shift Radio projects, through the editing and the releasing and the filming of full-length movies and other videos that I'm constantly doing through YouTube, and through just like being able to produce and direct and manage, and all this awesome stuff that brings us here on a weekly basis, that helixes us into this very potent and very powerful point through this portal to be able to help inspire each other. So it's an awesome world to be able to have the opportunity to co-create Paradigm shift with with you paradigm shift radio and paradigm shift central so again if we can get a person signed up as a contributor by going to paradigm shift central.com slash donate before the end of the episode then we will be able to get some free shift buttons to one of the lucky community members and again send a message to paradigm shift central.com sorry send a message to facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio to be able to sync up for this week's button draw so that's all i gotta say let's make the most of the time we got alon is there anything else that you just want to add uh just before we bring on the next caller oh yeah of course um uh just guys if you want to see some pictures of that rally we've talked about and some more stuff go to facebook.com slash go love trip and you can find that this through paradigm shift as well and uh, thank you, Skull, for having us on the show. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Also, if you really want to get into more into the free hug, feel free to contact me and add me on Facebook. And also, if you want to join Love Trip, that's also you can do that and also contact me and whatever. And have a great night, guys. Thank you very much. Awesome. And again, you can find Alon. Just run a search on Alon Sharir, A-L-O-N space S-H-A-R-I-R. And uh, Alon, you're welcome to stick around, but I know if you're on a phone, you're probably going to want to save some of your time. So are you staying or going? Uh, no, I'm staying. I'm staying right now. Unlimited okay, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool. We'll, we'll keep you on in the background. And we still got Ryan and we still got Jessica. I just got them on mute just so there's no extra fuzz. But uh, let me just sort of bring Jessica on real quick and just see Jessica... Hello, Jessica. You're still with us? Hi. Yep. Hey, was, was there anything that you maybe just wanted to pass on to Alon? Maybe anything that could tie back into sharing what we know in terms of manifestation topics and, and not just keeping it concise because we'll, we'll, uh, we we'll got 30 minutes left so we still got a few more callers we'll bring on. But just wanted to give you a chance. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one really quick thing, um, which is that um, what we're viewing in our reality is also a direct reflection of what we're focused on internally. It's not good or bad. It is what it is. And uh, let that be, um, you know, let that be a, <laughs> a compass for us to determine what direction we wish to go in. I don't know. Awesome. Maybe that was a redundant <laughs> point because I feel like you've touched on that before, but... For some well, reason, I felt like saying it in that particular way was, like, important. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, like, checking in with <laughs> which, which way our compass is, is pointing. I think, yeah. Yeah, because we're, we're constantly shooting. All of us have lasers, uh, lasers that shoot out of our heart because love is, like, the most powerful superpower of all, and we all have heart lasers, and we can use love our heart lasers. lasers. Love lasers. Pew, pew. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. awesome. Hey, guys. 
Can I add, like, uh, I might be Go going ahead. since I just had something. Um, I just, uh, we did free hugs uh, two days ago in, uh, in Toronto, in uh, Dunda Square. And, uh, and this, uh, this girl that got a, got a hug from us and also a shirt, by the way, um, she just showed me something amazing that she wrote. I want to share with you really quick before you bring on the other guests. And, and it goes like this. Check it out. Wait. Okay. When we have an intuition or a dream to pursue a particular course in our lives and we allow this guidance, certain events transpire that feel like magic coincidences. We, we feel more alive and excited. The events seem destined as though they were supposed to happen. Your perception and coincidences equals synchronicity. Yay. Wow. Yay. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> That was good. That was yeah, good. I'll, I'll, I'll send it exactly. to you on Paradigm Shift Radio so everybody can see that. Beautiful. Perfect. All right, man. So, Alon, did you say you got to head out? or? Um, just put me on mute and we'll yeah. see. Like, I will listen to the show in the background. Cool, man. All right. We love you, love you guys too, man. And is Alon there? Uh, he will be here soon. He's supposed to arrive. That's why we that's why put you on mute and I'll send you a message when he's here. I know. I know Oz was excited. He wants to talk about cannabis on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. He wants to. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a good conversation with him about it. Yeah, like just it's it's something that he wants to share what he knows and what he knows is the idea that cannabis can be worked with as like a valuable asset, a valuable a valuable ally within this reality and uh yeah, I want to yeah. go in that direction too. So, well, if not now another time definitely. But uh yeah, we'll put you guys on mute. Thanks again, Alon. Thanks so much. Love Trip team. You guys rock. You guys you guys are the love that you wish to see in the world. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Alon. <laughs> cool. All and right, Alon. Talk to you soon, man. All right, peace. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Jessica is still here on the show. Uh, I just got Ryan on mute uh, with the fuzz in the background, but we're going to nothing. Uh, Ryan, we'll just check in with you real quick, but we're going to make sure we got time to bring on the next caller. Ryan, you're still with us? Yeah, I'm here. Cool, man. Uh, was there anything uh, just short and sweet that you wanted to add into this? Uh, yeah, you you said uh, I got some fuzz in the background. Can you hear me all right or no? Yeah, it's okay. It's just it's just regular phone noise. It's okay. Right on. Yeah, I've heard you guys talked about this before, but I want to give you my little take on it about Tesla and his energy and frequency and vibration quote. Um, and some people's like, whoa, what do those words mean? Well, think about energy. It's merely just. Uh, uh, could be a form of matter you can equate energy with matter so frequency can also be used as thought not just sound so in the vibration you can equate that as like a feeling that is derived from all of the you know uh the frequency that you think on so if you think a certain way you feel a certain way and you can affect your matter a certain way um this is all done like you can counteract uh, outside stimuli, uh, outside sounds with your own thought frequencies. And I thought that to be rather interesting, especially when you take into the consideration of the work of cymatics. It's fascinating stuff. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, man. <laughs> cool, man. I'll go on yeah. and on. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep filing out, man. So awesome. All right, Ryan. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just let it sit there. Uh, we can always sort of weave our way back into certain topics. Cymatics is definitely, definitely something I'm a big fan of. So we'll bring on the next caller, uh, Ryan. I'm just going to put you on mute, and uh, we'll sort of bring you on here and there if that's cool. Is that okay? Sounds great. Cool, man. Thanks. All right. So uh, going to bring on caller from air code seven three two. So or sorry, no, I apologize. That's a lie. Going to bring on the caller who has been waiting the longest, and that's a caller from air code nine seven zero. So caller from air code nine seven zero. We're going to bring you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello, hello, hello? caller. Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Hey, what's up? Yo, man. All right, caller, please introduce yourself. Welcome to Paradigm Shift Radio, and what do you know that you would like to bring to the show? Well, um, I just have to say I was on last week, and I really liked our conversation and where it was going. Uh, this is Is the Love. Welcome back. Right on, man. How's it going? <laughs> good, man. Good, good. So, yes, please continue. Excellent. Well, I... 
I don't know. I'm just kind of in awe right now. Um, just kind of thinking about the fact that we're having this conversation right now. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, at this point in my life, in my experience, I can say that we are ever... Let me rephrase that. We are at the crossroads, I, I, I think. And we have left with a choice. We either consciously choose something different and consciously create from what we've learned from our experience so far, or we keep repeating the same patterns and same behaviors and in a sense experiencing the same thing over and over. So now that we have that awareness where we've been, where we are, who we are, who we're becoming, it's it's really a chance for us to uh, um converge in such a way where we can resonate on a larger scale and uh, i don't know it's it, it really comes down to experiencing it in the ever present moment that we're in right now 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 you get the point so i mean just thinking about that I don't know, like going into that. What do what does it mean by living in the like now, now, now? It's not thinking about what happened ten minutes ago and being resentful of how this person treated you, or you know, engaged in any type of past thought of what happened, other than what you learned from it and what you're taking from it and what you're going to do differently. Not thinking about the future and being anxious over it, being fearful of the unknown. Really being under, like, really being in the moment means to me appreciating everything that is in our field and as our immediate area, what we're experiencing, regardless of how we may perceive it. It's meant to show us something that will take us into the next moment. And so we can continue to remember, continuing to grow, evolve, uh, expand, um, transcend we, the previous levels of understanding that we've come from. I don't know if you want to call it that. I that I think it's all about remembering and just being. And it doesn't really get much more complicated than that for me. I don't know, because I've always known since a very young age that I was really not in agreement with a lot of the things that were going on in this world. And the only way I knew to actually do something about that was to create like I created a small work of art. And, you know, you can't be thinking about, you know, fighting with your neighbor or what happened 10 minutes ago or what happened five years ago or 30 years ago or 60 years ago or not be thinking about what the future is because you're creating it. So don't get overwhelmed and be in that moment and create that work of art being focused so intently on just being with it, being with whatever you're working with whether you're working with clay or you're working with uh, paint or you're talking, communicating with people, it's all art. Mm. It's everywhere. We're creating a living work of art with our lives. I mean, yeah. we have the option. We have the option to. I mean, there has been the, the previous example of how we've created our own hell. But now we have more awareness. Let's create our own utopia. Let's go back to Lemuria. I'm sure a lot of people that are listening well are well aware of like actually Lemuria and the motherland, Mu, and Atlantis, and it's all in the balance of the heart. You know, appreciating what we have, not like getting so wrapped up in wanting more and more and more. Appreciating what is present. And working with that, creating with that, not okay. being so far up in the head, but not being so far on the base level either, being really centered. And I think that happens with the heart. 
And my one of my friends was kind of talking about how the heart chakra or that what we think of the heart chakra, that area, that center, is the new ground grounding point. It's like mm. the new root chakra. And I thought it was interesting talking about that because, you know, fear, it, it, fear of survival, fear of the unknown, we're attached to uh, things staying the same way. So we're, we're tending to stay in the very base level. When we can go up and above, you know, conquering our fears, moving past our shame, our blame, our guilt, our resentment, our grief. You know, all those lies that we tell ourselves, at least the ones that I told myself for the longest time, I had to, you know, just let go and release and, you know, be aware of when they came back. I was like, no, that's not, you know, that's a lie. Um, realizing the illusions that I bought into and the attachments that I held on to. And those are all things that really, I think, that limit us in that living that living work of art i mean we have that choice to create a living work of art a, a living masterpiece you know not only on a small scale but on a larger scale and it's an art project of love in my mind and that's why i kind of have been working with people not only in one-on-one -on -one, but in convergence like situations where we get together and we figure out what we can co-create what we want to co-create and it's about that now, being aware, being aware how we create, you know, being conscious of that, our choices, with our thoughts, you know, with our feelings, our emotions, you know, our actions, what we're doing and how we're impacting the world. Because we are influencing one another with our actions. We either show uh, or provide a great example of what not to do, or we provide a great example of what to do. And I would be like to be the one that starts showing people, you know, what we can do, what's possible, you know, not the limitations of what people have told us is not possible. Let's explore the unknown and let's not be afraid of it. Let's go full and enjoy that adventure, enjoy that ride because we're sure. conscious now. So I just wanted to say that, I don't know, that came in from uh, above, beyond and center. <laughs> uh, I just want to say I love everyone, and um, I'm, I just I appreciate the, everything that we have going here. Much love, much love. Right on, man. Yeah, much love, much love indeed from Isla Love. So thank you so much, man. That was that was awesome. And uh, yeah, yeah, like just sort of getting into the flow on that one, and uh, very cool stuff indeed. So thank you so much. And uh, we're gonna really just we only got 17 minutes left on the clock here, so we're gonna try and bring on at least two more callers. And uh, and thank you so much, everybody, for being patient. Those of you in the queue, we're gonna bring you on. And those of you who don't get onto this and are still looking to get engaged with the community, reminder that we do have the after party hangout, which you can find through facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio that's through google plus you'll be able to join that and get involved and going back to the idea of the shift buttons we will be doing a shift button draw at the end of the episode if we can get a person signed up as a contributor simply by donating to the radio show either a one-time simple donation or through the monthly contributions for a couple dollars a month to be able to help support the future of the show and all that awesome stuff so thank you so much again is love we'll just uh do you mind if i mute you we're going to bring on another caller and just uh keep the background less static uh, cool? thanks man yeah, awesome Madonna. And post your uh, Facebook for for yourself and anybody else. Just post your Facebook profiles into the live chat now and uh, get connected with each other. So cool. Thanks again, man. One love. One love. <laughs> awesome. All right. So the next caller that we're going to bring on is uh, based on the time here. It's a caller from area code 647. We're going to bring you on to the show next. And uh, we'll see if we can get another caller on. And that caller will be a caller from area code 414. So caller from area code 647, we're going to bring you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello, hello, caller. Can you hear us? Yep, I'm here. Awesome. Call, caller, welcome to the show. Is this James again? Yes, it is. Awesome. Well, well, welcome back, James. This is kind of funny because I think like almost everyone from the show has been someone who was on the show last episode. Um, but yes, please, James, what is it that you would like to share with the episode? And if possible, if you can keep it short, then we'll be able to bring on uh, another person after you, if that's okay. But I'll pass yeah, the no over to you, and I think you know what to do from here. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be really short. Uh, you know, part of the conversation has been around, you know, uh, people's vibration, uh, 
you know, people's energy. And what I wanted to very, very briefly touch on uh, is a theory, a controversial theory uh, by Penrose and uh, Hameroff. And it's about something called orchestrated objective reduction. And I'm going to put uh, the link to this into the chat as well for people to look at. Basically, it's a theory talking about how the at the quantum level, consciousness is derived from something called microtubules, which are in the neurons of the brain. It talks about how proto-consciousness and the underlying consciousness of the universe exists and that our brains on the micro level on the cellular level are able to tap into those vibrations and that's what brings forth and allows to bring forth everyone's consciousness uh both in ourselves but also you know possibly into uh you know other animal species so w what i wanted to briefly touch on is this this idea that uh everything that we think say and do can come from the the quantum level of these vibrations that are happening in the brain and that on the quantum level, the way that our uh, neurons interact with each other, those resonant frequencies are what bring about uh, on, you know, on the higher level, everything we think, say, and do. There's actually been studies where, uh, where they've put uh, ultrasound vibrations on someone's cranium on their brain it has affected their mood it has affected how they think you know there's been uh you know studies in psychology of placing electrodes on people's heads uh and so i just wanted to bring uh the awareness of this theory called orchestrated objective reduction that talks about how on the quantum level uh that even on that scale on that very small scale uh everything that we are is influenced by these forces at that level that's basically it. Right on, man. Awesome, man. And I, again, I love the fact that the science that we're, we're that we're venturing into on this new frontier is uh, merging with the the spiritual mysticism understanding, and and even just going back to the idea that like every atom is a black hole, and uh, yeah, like that sort of ties in with the whole holographic matrix of the universe, for, where everything literally is reflecting everything around it. But yeah, that's cool, man. That's that's awesome. And again, uh, just plug plug your plug your website where people can get connected uh, with you. Or sorry, just if you want to plug your Facebook, also people can get connected with you. And I was just saying, for uh, is the love who was on just a, a moment ago, you can check out his main website at it's the it's the love. So that is spelled i t z d a l o v e dot com. And feel free to check that out. And uh, yeah, just reminding the people if we can get in a person to donate before the end of the episode, then we will do a button draw before we finish this episode, which is in the next twelve minutes. So if somebody can contribute as a donator for this, this episode, please just send me a message in the private chat through the live chat, or even just send a message for me on Facebook. And either get it in an hour, or just let me know if you're going to do it in the next day or so. And a new person signing up for a contributor will be able to ensure that we get buttons out this week. So thank you so much. And uh, James, uh, is, we'll uh, get ready to pass it over to uh, the next caller to bring them on. Is there anything else you just wanted to hit upon? Uh, no, that was it. Just to bring awareness to this uh, to this theory and that, you know, it might be interesting for people to read about, you know, the, the quantum level processes that uh, uh, are, are newly being, you know, really seriously considered as, as a, a part of the mystery of uh, what brings forth our consciousness. Very cool, very cool indeed. And uh, what would be something, what would be the, the term for that, that people could just run a Google search on? Yeah, orchestrated objective reduction. Perfect. Awesome. So there, there you go. Feel free running some searches on that, acquiring some more information and, and how that how that sort of fits into the bigger picture. Uh, definitely definitely being able to connect those dots is a super exciting thing for all of us. So, uh, James, I'm just going to put you on, on mute. Is, is that okay? And then we'll bring on another caller? Absolutely. Perfect. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. So we're going to bring on a caller from area code 414. Or is that where, yeah, so a caller from air code 414, 11 minutes left on the clock. And if we got time, we'll bring on caller from 305 after that. So caller from, or sorry, no, not caller from area code 305. Bring on caller from area code 
732, I believe. Um, presuming that's not a person that we brought on earlier. I'm, I'm, we've got a lot of people in the queue right now. That's a good thing if I'm getting confused by how many people we got. But we're going to call it from air code 414, and we'll see what they have to share. So call it from air code 414, bringing you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello, hello, caller. Can you hear us? Yes, hello. Hello, hello, caller. Welcome to Paradigm Shift Radio. Please introduce yourself, and what do you know that you would like to bring to the show? Oh, thank you. My name is Talisa Poet, and uh, I'm listening to the show for the first time. Thank you. It's, it's wonderful. Um, what I know, what I know is that the heart knows, is that quite often, um, you know, we live in our brain and we are a thought um, when we converse, then we're sharing ourselves with another person and opening our universe to that person's universe and, and sharing in a way. But really what we're doing when we're walking around is we're living in our own mind and we're applying our thought to a function, um, and that's essentially who we are. Um, I want to say, um, just touching on it, I live on Facebook, and I have better friends on Facebook than I do in real life, I would have to say. And someone asked me the other day, they said, how can you love someone that you've never really met? You've never met them face-to-face. You haven't shared breath with them. How can you love somebody? And that was my answer. I said, well, we are our thoughts. Um, We are our words. And and if we live in our thought and if, if we are our consciousness, then if I am reading a series of letters from one person and I'm getting to know them and over a period of time I see the same things reoccurring over and over again, then I am meeting them. I'm meeting them through their word. I'm meeting them through their thought. And I think that sometimes um, actually knowing someone through their thought is better than the physical, than having sometimes someone right next to you because quite often we get caught up in the physical and we lose track of or we don't provide our thought. We don't share ourselves. We don't share what we believe and who we are with that other person. Um, And so that was my answer. The other thing that I want to say is that um, quite often I'm a bridge. I'm I'm black and white, and so I've been hated from both sides. And I've found that throughout my life, almost 40 years, that I've been used as a bridge of understanding uh, between people. And I see that more and more now, especially um, with what's going on uh, with um, the different religions and kind of coming to head with Gaza and everything to that effect. And I have friends from all over the world some of them opposing each other. And I just want to say that the answer is love. It always has been. It always is. Love is the end all and the be all. Our heart knows. Sometimes we have to leave our consciousness and just follow our heart and trust it and have faith in it, and it will lead us correctly. So that was all. (laughs) Thank you so much. Sorry, remind me your name? Oh, Talisa, poet. Talisa. Cool, awesome. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you so much, Lisa. That's beautiful, and, and yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for sharing your your words with uh, this global oh. audience here. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you for having me. Have a great evening. Huh. Awesome. Well, uh, I, I was gonna say, um, yeah, well, we got about seven minutes on the clock, so yeah, if that's okay with you, we'll uh, we'll see if we can get on one more caller, and then we may be able to slip in uh, a final closing meditation, uh, and we'll also do the button draw. But uh, yeah, is that okay if we put you on mute? Is that okay? Oh, no, that's fine. Thank you very much. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sweet. So, um, yeah, just as a theoretical idea, Jessica, I was thinking, uh, she's still on mute, but Jessica, I could bring you on in the next couple minutes if you would be interested in doing a guided meditation. Uh, we only got seven minutes left in the clock. We're going to do a button draw at the end of the episode. Thanks to our friend Oliver, who has decided to sign up as a contributor to support Paradigm Shift Radio. So thank you so much to Oliver. Because of him, somebody's life, somebody's life, lives are going to be changed because somebody is going to be getting a new bat to shift buttons and of course you can order yours at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash buttons they're incredibly useful tools to help evoke synchronicity build community and have an awesome time so add them to your inventory so with that said we're going to bring on caller from area code I was going to say 732 I'm just not sure if that's the caller we already brought on I feel like it is Um, let me spice it up a bit and we're going to bring on caller from area code um, hold on I'm confusing myself here so let's bring on caller from area code 732 and I'll just see whether or not I'm getting confused or if this is a new caller. So caller from air code 732, bringing you, you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello. who Caller who are you, if you don't mind me asking? 
This is you, Cisco, darling. How's my soul shine oh, tonight? Oh, perfect. Hey, Cisco. It's good Good to hear you. Awesome. What a surprise. Hello, well, soul shines. I love you all. I send you love, and I send you light, and I send you blessings. Awesome. Cisco, this is, I'm going to put you on the spot, but we're, we're going to actually set this up. You're going to sort of lead us into like a thoughtful kind of reflective meditation. And I'm going to play okay. some music underneath you. And we only got five minutes left in the show, so I'll let you know when there's a minute left. Yeah, we'll, tell, no, we'll, we'll go over the button fast. drop. Roll with it. So I everybody who's listening to this. Yeah, Are you getting your, there? Get, yeah, so I'm just going to say, for everyone listening to this, get comfortable. Next four minutes, just allow yourself to relax. Center in on the breath stillness and cisco please by all means the talking stick is yours oh my darling soul shine i love you each and every one and i just want to send out a note i was stopped this evening in full stride i was headed off to something else and something said call i have a few people out there i feel you i see you i see you okay i do not want you to be discouraged i want you to understand this is someone that has lived. I've been on the other side. I've come back. I've, you know, I had some near-death experiences and full-death experiences. And I'm telling you, what you are doing here is being seen. Um, there's a couple of people out there that are very discouraged. They feel like, I keep trying. I keep hugging. I keep smiling. I keep loving. And I'm getting nothing back. Understand what you put out, you will get back. But understand that sometimes you plant your seed in soil that is more fertile than others. Do you understand that, Skull? My microphone is muted. This is... <laughs> I'm not supposed to be talking now. I'm meditating. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> meditate. Meditate. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So please don't be discouraged. Know that everything that you send out, you're going to get back. Remember that every bit of light that you put out will shut out darkness. Every hug you give, you get back either immediately or later on. I don't want you to be discouraged and you're sitting, I can talk to you right now, you're sitting in your room and you're thinking that your family doesn't understand you. You're thinking that you don't fit in. You think that maybe you're putting so much in to trying to change this world and nothing is happening and you're not seeing anything. Sometimes you have to understand that you're not going to see the immediate result. You have to let it grow and you have to keep planting that seed and you have to put it out there. Don't let the darkness overtake you. This is your journey. You cannot learn when everything goes right. You cannot learn when everything goes your way. Okay? We learn the most when things are a little tougher and a little harder and you have to try a little bit more. And that's okay. We are all connected and we're all here for a purpose. We're all here to learn and we're all here to try to reach a higher vibration of being. And it all will make sense in the end. And the end is just the beginning. And I love you. I see you. I've been there. And I understand. And for some reason, I was stopped in doing what I was doing tonight to stop and call you to tell you these words. A small group of people and change the world. Do not be discouraged. Do not put out that light. You shine. You shine through the storm. You shine through the darkness. You shine through the fog and the clouds. I see you, and I love you, and you're beautiful, and you matter, and you are important. And those are my words tonight. <laughs> you are blessed. And we are all connected. And just remember that every action has a reaction. You may not be blessed enough to see it at the time, but when you look back on it, you will understand. You there will we understand. go. 
Cisco, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to everybody who's been tuned in for another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. I hope I hope this episode successfully downloads some upgrades into your consciousness. And a uh, shout out to all my fellow guardians of the galaxy. Let's continue to use our superpowers of love to change the world through the manifestation, through the choices that we choose, and through the love that we are. So we're going to end the show. And this week's winner for the shift buttons are Jessica Bresner. Congratulations to Jessica. <laughs> She's been a big supporter of the show for a while and of course join us in the after party at facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio we're going to end the show here and i'm going to play the outro music and i'm going to try and bring on a couple people all at once and we're all going to take turns and saying goodbye to the internet so everybody who's been on the show now i'm just going to like unmute everyone so say goodbye to the internet everyone so bye to the internet have a great night everyone i love you all namaste namaste <laughs> Alright. Thanks guys. <laughs> Alright guys. See you in the future. Thank you for listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. If you would like to connect with people where you are and continue the conversations further, then check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash buttons to order your supply of shift buttons to share with people to help invite them to this global project while also helping make new friends and building local community where you are. Shift buttons are tools to hack the matrix and tap into the synchronistic nature of reality to accelerate our collective awakening. Enter the promo code PSR into your order to receive additional bonus buttons to your supply. Thank you again, and one love.